In this video, we're going to learn how to make a cutout mask in the UI. Using the standard UI mask, you can show objects behind it, and with this one, we're going to invert it and instead only show objects not behind the mask. This can be used to make some really interesting effects. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so this is a really quick video that will help you if you're searching for this effect just like I was. A while ago, I made the Code Monkey Steam app, and for the transitions between scenes, I wanted to do a simple circle shrink and grow. Now, the simplest way to do this is by making a black quad occupy the whole screen, and then have a cutout mask in the shape of a circle that shrinks and grows. Unity already comes with a default UI mask, however that one shows everything behind the mask. Whereas I wanted the opposite, I wanted to use the mask as a cutout and show everything not in the mask. Ok, so let's make our cutout mask. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Over here is my basic demo project. So it's just a character sitting around idle just for fun. Then over here in the hierarchy, we can go into our UI canvas. Now in here, let's create a very basic UI, create a image. Okay, so we have a basic quad. Now let's first look at how the standard mask works. Now with this image, in order to make a mask, we just add the mask component. And now what this does is masks out the things behind it. So let's add inside another UI image. So it's a child of that one. And this one, let's say, just give it a different color. So right now, depending on the size of this image, it only shows where the parent is there. Then here the parent can have any sprite. So for example, let's add a simple circle sprite. So the parent is in the shape of a circle. And you can see that it only shows the child image where that circle exists. So we can also just disable the mask graphic and now it really only shows the child on the areas where they are inside of the mask image. Okay, so this is the standard mask. It shows where the mask exists. But what we want is the opposite, to show it where it does not exist. So for that, let's grow and create a new c -sharp script. Call this our cutout mask UI. Okay, now in here, the first thing we're going to do is add using unity engine.ui, so we can access the UI functions. And now in here, instead of extending mono behavior, we're instead going to extend a normal image. So we're essentially going to replace our normal image with the script. And now the way that the standard UI mask works is by using the stencil buffer. If we go back in the editor here and select the mask game object, so this is the one that has the mask component, and in here you can see that it's using this UI default material. As soon as we apply the mask component, it applied this specific material. If we remove it or just disable it, then there you go, it's using the standard default UI material, and as soon as we enable it, there you go, it gets all of these options. So you can see all the properties that are related to the Sensal buffer. Now, the main thing is we're doing various comparisons and writing to the Sensal buffer. I won't go too deep into what exactly is the Sensal buffer, but if you'd like to see a dedicated video covering that, let me know in the comments. For this case, all we need to know is that it's a simple grid based on the pixels on the screen, and it does some comparisons with the underlying values. So the mask here has this shape of the circle, and it's writing values on the pixels that make up this circle shape. Then the image behind it is doing a comparison and only showing pixels where that comparison succeeds. So what we do is essentially just invert this comparison operation. For that, let's go to our script and we are extending image, okay. And now since we are extending it, we can override the property that gets the rendering material. So to do that, we do public, we override, and we're going to override the material, material for rendering. So this property is returning the material that the UI will use to render this object. And here we have the base material for rendering. So this essentially gives us the basic UI material. And now we can actually try to modify this material. So instead of using the base one, let's first make a copy. So material, and we're going to make a new material, which will essentially duplicate that one. Then we take this material and we're going to access the shader in order to call set int. And we're going to modify the property stencil comp in order to modify the comparison that is used. Now, like I said, the normal mask image compares the value with the stencil buffer and it only shows the pixel when that value equals what it finds. So in here we want to do the opposite, so not equal. So here for the value we can use the compare 
function. And this is inside the namespace using unity engine dot rendering. So we have the compare function and all of these. And again, we want the not equal, so not equal. And this one expects an int, so just cast down into an int. And finally, we just return our new material. So we're making a duplicate copy so that we're not modifying the actual base material for rendering. Otherwise, we could cause all sorts of issues with all of the other materials that use the base UI material. Okay, so this is it. We take the base, we modify the comparison. In order to make it equal, we make it not equal, and we simply use this one. Okay, so let's test. Now here in the editor, let's duplicate our mask container so we can see both effects in action. So here, just duplicate this one, shift it on the left side. And now in this one, on the parent, we're still going to have the same thing. So just a normal image with a mask. And what changes is over here on the underlying child image. Instead of using the basic image component, we're going to drag our cutout mask UI script. And right away, you can actually see it in action. So let's just tint this in something and just like this. So we're using a custom UI mask image. And over here, we can see our perfect effect in action. So we can change the shape of our underlying child image. And it only shows where the parent is not. Whereas this one only shows where the parent exists. All right, so we have our effect exactly as we want it. Awesome. So as you can see, it's very simple. We just really need to change the comparison operation on the default UI shader, and it all works perfect. Okay, now let's see this quickly apply to a very simple, very nice transition cutout effect. Okay, so here it is, exactly the same thing. So we just have a mask parent. It has an image and a mask, and then a nice animation just to make it look cool. And underlying it, we have a basic image, which is really just a black quad. So if we try this, Okay, so here we are seeing our normal scene and now press a button and there you go. The animation plays, the circle grows smaller. So the cutout closes and the screen is now black. Now press it again and there you go. The inverse happens and the screen opens up. So here in the editor, you can see what's actually happening. So the underlying image never changes. We're only modifying the actual mask parent. So as we click, there you go. It shrinks down and click again and it shrinks up. So here it is. This is a really cool effect that you can very easily build by using just this simple custom cutout mask image. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unity codemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions in the comments, and I'll see you next time.